want to monitor prints remotely, install a Pi Cam. Let's do it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my corner. It's me, Jeff. And this time around, we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into Clipper and stuff like that. And I've been using Moonraker. I think it's working great. Um, but we're 58 Fahrenheit. It's getting a little nippy, right? So I uh, hooked up a uh, Pi Cam up to the Tronxy here because I want to keep an eye remotely on my prints. So I'm going to show you how I did that right now. So, hey guys, so here it is. I've um, ended up ordering a um, camera kit for my Raspberry Pi. It's just a very basic camera kit. There are better cameras out there. Um, I'm not going to be taking um, any high definition videos or anything, so this will work for me. It can take video up to 1080p and it can take photos a little bit higher than that. Um, so uh, I'll leave a link for this down below. Uh, it's an affiliate link. Um, but it is, um, from what I've been testing with it, it seems pretty good. Um, comes in a small box like this. It does come with this ribbing cable though. Um, and the reason why I actually bought this one was it actually came with the one for the Pi Zero. So what you're gonna need to do is just swap out your ribbing cables. So you need to lift these black little flaps and you need to pull this guy out, okay? And then you, what you want to do is where all your your connect your contacts are, you just want to have those facing where your contacts are towards the circuit board, okay? And you're just going to slide that in, and then you're just going to push that bar back down. And then that should be it. There'll be a little tab on top of the camera you'll have to peel off. And then as far as your Raspberry Pi goes, you have the same thing on this side. That's your camera connector. So again, the same thing. Make sure you figure out what side your contacts are on. Insert snugly. And you want to push that black bar down. And just like that. So now this is all set up and ready to go. Um, what I did do was I did print out a camera case that I liked. And what it is, it's on a GoPro mount. So because of that, and depending on your setup, you can um, use um, different um, hookups and figure out how you want to do this. Right now, I'm just going to do this as a base stand. But eventually what I want to do is actually get like a little swivel or something so I can adjust it and stuff like that. And I'll look for a, a STL link later on um, for that. But for now, I'm going to build this case. Now, what you're going to need to do, I'll leave all the links below. Um, this is a separate STL. All the case parts are one STL. And then the GoPro mount on the bottom is a separate STL. Those will all be linked down below. You're also going to need some M5s. I think these are M5. Whoops. I think these are M516s. Let's just double check on that. Yeah, that's an M516. And I think this is an M520. Yeah, M520. So that's what you'll need to build this case. And what we're going to do, I'm going to build it right now. Okay, so. I, um, this came with actually two backs. It came with a flat back and the Raspberry Pi back. I figured I'd use the Raspberry Pi back because I'm hoping, you know, might give it just a little bit more air circulation, you know? So it has all the, um, the pins should line up properly and you should be able to just snug your Pi on top of the pins as so. You might have to, um, depending on your tolerances, some gentle, and I mean gentle persuasion. Um, and then after that, it's actually really pretty simple, to be honest with you. You're just going to put the uh, backing on uh, and make sure that you're just kind of lined up like so. So this is... The ribbon cable goes through this side, so there's a lower side on here. Let's see if I can. There's a low side and a high side. You want the low side towards where the ribbon cable is going to be. So, and this is kind of cute. It just sort of um, 
Once you line it up, it will just twist in. Just like that. Come on, there you go, see? And then we're simply just going to loop the camera around, tickety boo, like so. There should be some little holes. And there you go. Just be careful, tolerances are extremely tight, okay? And then you want your camera case or your cover, which should in theory just kind of pop on there. And that's it. That's uh, what we're doing here. And then all we're going to do is attach this mount here and then just grab one of the M5 bolts. And I'm pretty sure with these you can just hand tighten. It's not going to get a lot of pressure or stress or anything on it. So, and same thing here. Yeah, put the bolt in there. Actually, come to think of it, you probably want to run this towards the uh, the back of the camera, I'm thinking. Just like so. I think that's probably your best bet. So just be kind of careful how you're mounting up your stuff. And then finally, this would just mount in here. Just like so. Um, there's a specific hole for your your nut and your bolt side. Again, I'll tighten all these up with an Allen key later, but ultimately this is your little stand here. So I'll have to see how she pans out. All right. Beautiful. All right, let's put her on the printer and see. So here we go. She's all hooked up. Um, what I did was I actually just drilled a hole and put a boat nut and an M3 screw in to sort of pivot the camera as opposed to, um, sorry for the focus here, and pivot the camera as opposed to just uh, putting a swivel on it because it's kind of small anyways. But yeah, it um, looks good. See, I'll twist it a little. So I can do what I need to do. So in order to get your camera working, you're going to have to SSH into your Pi. I'm going to use PuTTY because that's what seems to work for me. So you're going to have to type your address of your Pi in and open it up. And log in as Pi and use your password. Clipper install and update helper. I believe it's the initials are it. So it's... You're going to run this code here. And that's going to bring you in Clipper. And you're going to type 1 to install. And you're going to install for your webcam MPEG streamer. I already have it installed. That's what you're, all you have to do is install that. Once you have the MPEG streamer installed, back out of it and quit. And then you're going to go into the Raspi config. So you're going to type sudo space raspi hyphen config. And that will bring you into the menu. What you're going to do is go into your interface options and you're going to enable legacy mode for the camera right here would you like to enable legacy camera support you're going to type yes okay once you're done that you're going to go to finish 
and now you're just going to reboot your Pi. You can either unplug it. Once you're done with your Raspberry Pi config and installing your MPG streamer, you're going to go into Fluid. So you're going to type your address, and that will bring you up here. You're going to go to Configuration. You're going to see there's a new file over here, okay? It's your webcam text. We're going to edit that. Now, this tells you exactly what to do here. Um, if you just scroll down, when you get this, um, these will be hashtagged out. Okay? You want to unhashtag them. Now, the setup that works for me the best is when you go to camera, I put USB in. Under camera options, 120, <laughs> 1280 by 720 with 15 frames per second. I don't have a problem with this little camera here with any of these extra things. Um, so I've left all of this alone. The only thing I did change was these two. I believe this had a different thing. I just shortened this down a little bit. Basically, this is how I've left it, and this seems to work quite well for me. Um, the last thing you need to do is you need to go into settings, into your camera, go into your default camera, and you want to make sure this is on MPG Adaptive. That's what's worked for me. You can drop your frames down to 30 if you want, and then save it. And as you go into it, currently I'm running about 15 frames a second now. That's because I have really bad Wi-Fi downstairs. Um, but it's very, very manageable. So, and that's it. That's how you do this. Pretty straightforward and simple. And it makes it nice that I'm roasty toasty up here. And I can actually start a print. So I'm going to hit start print. And everything's going to warm up and do what it's got to do. It's kind of great. <laughs> I really like. So that's all it is. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Again, I am no expert. I'm just learning about Clipper and all the things. So if you have better ways to do things, please leave them in the comments down below. Again, I'm not using this to record or do time lapses or anything at this point in time. I'm simply using it as a way to monitor my prints in case something goes wrong. I can quickly turn it off. But yeah, um, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really fun to do. If this helped you at all, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you have a better way of doing this because that would help me out. Um, if you're cruising through the channel, again, please hit subscribe, help the channel to grow. I'll leave you uh, the link for the STLs for the camera mount, um, plus an affiliate link for the camera itself down below. Um, so until next time, guys, thanks so much. See ya.